Joining me on set, Deepa Shravaram, politics reporter for NPR and an alum here of Team Meet the Press, former New York Democratic Congressman Joe Crowley, and former Republican Pennsylvania Congressman Charlie Dent. Um, Deepa, we, we're, everything's unprecedented. Everything is we've never seen before. Let's get that out of the way. Um, this, this idea, is this still a campaign or not? I think Trump himself shows vulnerability by how much they almost are forcing and are desperate to make the mugshot look good. Yes. Um, that was an immediate response yesterday. Mm -hmm. You see the swag coming out. This mm -hmm. is something they're very uh, interested in putting out there. Um, but it, to Dasha's point, you know, I, I think a lot of voters still have not made up their mind. I was in Nevada uh, a week ago talking to voters on the ground there. Trump is a name that they know. Mm -hmm. And they're familiar with this. They say a vote for him is on the table. But we saw on the debate stage the other night a number of other candidates who, yes, were shouting over each other at several mm -hmm. points in that debate. Um, but they have options on the table. And I think uh, that is something that is not yet decided uh, for someone like Donald Trump. Charlie Dent, what do you make of, do you, do you think there's a majority in the Republican electorate that wants to get rid of Trump? I mean, that's the question. We, we know there's a, there's a solid chunk of voters that are ready to move on. But is it a majority? I, I do believe it's a majority. Trump certainly has a strong plurality of people who will support him under all circumstances. Uh, but I agree, there are people who want to move on. Uh, the question is, I think the problem has been that after the first indictment of Trump in the New York case, the Stormy Daniels paying off the porn star, all those, so many of those candidates, with few exceptions, stood up and basically said, this is a witch hunt, Trump's a victim. Mm -hmm. Well, they agreed with him. They should have been pounding him, saying his conduct was terrible, whether it's a crime or not, it's up to the courts. But they mishandled this from day one. So a lot of the Republican voters... Because they forgive voters, him for the, what he actually did. Yeah, see, yeah, the Republican voters, so they hear this narrative that, oh, Trump's a victim. The other candidates are saying it. It's hard. They're, they have to beat this guy. They're not going to beat him uh, by, by saying that he's a victim and agreeing with the Trump narrative. They have to be more like Chris Christie and Asa Hutchinson and any other candidates who are trying to show some separation, and draw a sharp, hard contrast. What'd you make of the Tim Scott moment there, Joe? You guys are both, I'm curious yeah. of both of you, you guys have both done hand-to-hand -hand campaigning. Yeah. And, boy, it's always dangerous when you get into a debate with a voter. Yeah, well, I, you know, I was, I was with great interest watching that. Yes. I think we've all been there. I'm sure, I'm sure you felt that you don't know what you yeah. want to say. And you you, you like, kind of feel bad. It's almost, you don't remember my name, do you? You know, I got that all the time. Like, right. no, I don't. Please let me right. name. Yeah, let but, me go. Um, it, it, it's an uncomfortable feeling, certainly, and mm -hmm. I'm really holding it. I think what was really interesting about the other night, though, too, not just the moderators, but the peer pressure to answer the question. Will you support? You know, will you, um, do, you, do you think what Mike Pence did was the right thing? I mean, it took a while to get there, even for uh, the DeSantis, and ultimately he did, too. He's got no beef uh, with Mike. Greg, yeah, no beef with Mike. And calling him Mike and not the vice president. You know, <laughs> that's a like, line I'm never going to get out of my head. I got no beef with Mike. I, 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 Grudgingly. I, yeah. you, know, you know, Scott is a very gregarious fellow. We both served oh, with yeah. him in, in the House. A very mm -hmm. nice fellow, a nice guy. Uh, and I think he continues to try to be that nice guy. He doesn't want to ruffle too many feathers. Mm -hmm. He even saw it there, although he did challenge the voter and said, you want to have a monologue, you want to have a discussion or a debate. Well, you know? he jumped uh, to it. That's a, it was just a... Yeah. It was a... It was it's a, a no-win for him. Though. I know no it's a no-win, but... Yeah. Um, they're all, they're all praying for a Trump implosion. They've been praying correct. for that for years, but it's not They're happening. waiting for it, others we, to do we, it. Republicans yeah. have to take him down. They can't rely on the media to do it or the courts or the Democrats. They need to do it themselves. Uh, Charlie, I, as I... Deepa, I think you've heard me say this before. If you watch Star Wars, the, it was Darth Vader that got rid of the Emperor. Right. Meaning it has to be Republican. <laughs> <laughs> right? It has to, like, it wasn't has to come from right? Right. 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 It, it, right. It has to do that. I know you've heard me say Let's move. Let's... Um, the, I guess the question is, can what I can't, what I, the reason I'm not ready to sit here and say Trump's got this locked up is, you know, every week there's going to be some development right. in the trial. And we don't know what those developments are. And they could be small. They could be small. They could be someone flipping. All of a sudden, that's a, an oxygen suck right. out of the air. Could be some motion to sever. Could be this. But it, at some point, you know, there's a reason the metaphor, the straw that breaks the camel's back. One of these could be a piece of straw. <laughs> it could. It could. And and at the same time, though, it's kind of working from him. If these small, minute developments are garnering attention, if people are turning on their televisions or they're turning on their radio stations and they're hearing that a Trump is, you know, turning up at the Fulton County Jailhouse or this small development or this small development, he's dominating the airwaves. He's getting that coverage. He's getting that attention. Uh, and that's something that on the other side of the aisle, Joe Biden's going to have to fight for uh, at the same time when all of this is, is unfolding. I want to ask you guys about the strategy the other candidates took on, on Wednesday night. Charlie, uh, 
Vivek Ramaswamy is probably not going to be the nominee. If you say Donald Trump's the greatest president of the 21st century, un again, unless he disappears from the right. trail, he's got no path. A lot of candidates, to me, it looked like, well, they can't beat up Trump, so they're going to beat him, beat up him. But they left DeSantis alone. It seemed like a, a missed opportunity. Yeah, it, it, it was a missed opportunity. And, and Ramaswamy, I mean, I, it, I, I got the sense that he was running for number two. He wants to be vice he president. It. He couldn't yeah, believe yeah, his I mean, luck that everybody wanted I, to make him the center of attention. I, I, I cannot understand why a person would run for president of the United States without trying to take down the lead dog. That's what you need to do in these well, campaigns. But he <laughs> has already made, he's got a different calculation. As Jonathan Martin wrote, he's, he might be running for the next time. Yeah. Well, he, he could be, but I, at the end of the day, these guys, look, uh, Pence was uh, surprisingly aggressive. I think Haley actually made a good general election argument on the abortion issue. I do too. Uh, I and I think too. she was uh, rather clever in the way she phrased that. Probably didn't help her inside that room. Reminded me of how well John Kasich did at debates in 15 and 16. And I say yeah. this not disparagingly. Right. That gets you to a point. Correct. But it doesn't necessarily get you over the top. Well, again, these, these, a lot of these folks are playing to the evangelical base in Iowa, mm -hmm. which is really not representative of the broader electorate, which they're yeah. going to have to appeal to at some point. Well, when you hear the word consensus yeah. from someone like yeah. Nikki Haley on a primary yeah. debate stage, I mean, she's playing that game early. Uh, and it's not like anyone else is really throwing that out smart. there yet either. She needs it on money, I think. Mm -hmm. Donors wanted to hear yeah. that. Exactly. And I think that, you know, even though that may not work, but it, like, she needs to build a better infrastructure. Right now, she, doesn't she is not built to win, to compete in Iowa. Tim Scott is. And Robert Schwami, at 38 years of age, yeah. he captured a moment. Yeah, he did. I mean, people are kind of <laughs> knowing his name now, you know, in I his mean, face. I mean, the fake Ramaswamy is not a... He will be around for a while. Well, he's, not a, the, not the he's a shooting let, let me, star. Let me do it. I, I, I think it's probably Herman Cain, but... Yeah. It could be Pete Buttigieg, yeah, I, too, I mean, right? Yeah, Which is yeah, what we yeah. saw with Pete, the young guy that suddenly, now he's a relevant player. I think yeah. he's a shooting star. He's going to burn real brightly until he burns out. Yeah. Let me then, shift uh, over <laughs> to, to Joe Biden this week. Boy, the Maui visit visuals were tough, yeah. Deepa. They were just yeah. tough. And it's a reminder, this, what's this going to look like come a year from now? It is, it is uh, a question that's on a lot of people's minds. Um, that's definitely something uh, that that visit, of course, after a lot of kind of back and forth, him not commenting, and then right. this that huge disaster, I, a lot of sensitive issues, native populations, mm -hmm. like we were dealing a lot with, with Maui. Um, and that is something that, uh, you know, he's, he's there on the ground, and then we haven't seen him the rest of the week. Um, where's Joe Biden is a question that a lot of Republicans are already asking, and I think yeah. voters are going to start asking that soon, too. Hey, Joe, Bernie Sanders has given a big speech in New Hampshire this week about an agenda that he'd like to see the party put forward. Uh, look, he's not running for anything yet, but as someone said to me, he didn't, he didn't, it, this isn't an accident either. There's a lot of Democrats wondering, is there still going to be an, could there be an open nomination? Party? I don't think there will be. I think this is Joe Biden's presidency. It's going to be his future as well. He has a great record to run on. That can mm -hmm. continue What's to do the that. second term agenda? Well, I think it's to, to, to finish the job, as the president has said over I, and over I've again. I've heard that There's, phrase. What is it besides that? I think he has, first of all, there are Supreme Court nominations, hopefully, that come up that he can fill. They have the, the potential that to work on the issues of health care, to, to continue the agenda of, of, of accessing it for more Americans. The one thing I wanted to say about the Maui thing, though, and I think there, you know, nothing's ever perfect, but he wasn't, told, he wasn't throwing paper towels at people. Uh, he wasn't throwing hats at people. He was there with I get his it. wife. He's the alternative. And, and I, I get it. It's that's, not all mighty versus thing. alternative. Yeah, I get it's it. an important thing to, to, to note as well. In, in terms of compassion, the man is a compassionate man. I don't, I don't think it's that. It's more of the visuals were... No it, comment. It, it, forget no yeah. comment. Just watching him walk around. He, he, mm -hmm. This didn't look like a vibrant president right now. Yeah. And I think that's a struggle. Charlie Dent, if Joe Biden's political standing were stronger, do you think there'd be more uh, hand-wringing over Trump by Republicans? Uh, I don't know, but I, I think there are a lot of Republicans out there looking for an alternative. I mean, you hear a lot about the no-labels movement, trying to put together some kind are of... Are you thing. supportive of it? Uh, I, I am supportive of the idea of getting ballot access, absolutely. Uh, and now, that's, pull the plug if Trump's not the nominee, but I think that the, what they're doing is trying to provide an alternative for a lot of disaffected voters, I'd say you know, center-right to center-left. If Tr Trump, a winning, well, Trump can't get more than 45% of the vote. Depends who's a candidate. But if 45% is a winning number in a four-way race. It's, well, it's if the candidate possible. can't draw the vote, what's the use to having them? So well, I do think it's another third party. It's a part, no labels is a party unto itself. But remember what happened, though, in 2016. There was a large number of voters who did not vote for mm -hmm. either Trump uh, or, or Hillary Clinton. I think there's an even bigger number out there that is very dissatisfied, somewhere between center life, left to center I agree right with you. the spectrum. We just don't know where they're going to land. Exactly. Do you find them on the, on the trail a lot? Uh, in Nevada, yeah. 
I did. I talked to a lot of people uh, who are who are in that in that boat, but it's still it's still early. Well, you'll be glad for this. At the end of the show, I'm going to try to find out when the heck the Nevada primary or caucus <laughs> is and which one matters. Yep. But that's a whole other story. Deepa, Joe, Charlie, thank you all. Thank you. Excellent way to start the show. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.